Hello and welcome to an introduction to solid waste. This module is brought to you by the Environmental Compliance Assistance Program, which is part of the Energy and Environment Cabinet. Roadside dumps, like the one pictured, were commonplace back in the 1950s. The Solid Waste Disposal Act of 1965 tried to address growing waste amounts and ensure proper management. The Solid Waste Disposal Act promoted better technology in waste disposal, defined that it was the local agencies that had responsibility over waste, and provided funding. This act is why your city or county, or a company they contract with, picks up your trash and takes it to a local landfill. The Resource Recovery Act of 1970 was an amendment to the Solid Waste Disposal Act that started a push for recycling. Congress felt that the Solid Waste Disposal Act and Resource Recovery Act did not do enough. So the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act was developed in 1976. It deals primarily with hazardous waste, but Section D focuses on solid waste by banning open dumps and developing criteria for landfills. Here is the regulatory definition for solid waste. As you can see, it is a lot more complex than you might have imagined. The whole definition of solid waste basically breaks down to what you see here. The general category of solid waste can be broken into industrial and municipal wastes. Municipal waste can be further broken into household and commercial waste. Keep in mind that this is very generalized. There are lots of subcategories, including construction and demolition debris, special waste, medical, infectious, and even more. In terms of how to actually handle solid waste, there are three main categories. Regular solid waste, construction and demolition debris, and special waste. Here you can see examples for each type of waste category. The picture on the left is municipal waste, while the center is cinder blocks, which is a type of construction and demolition debris. The picture on the right is showing wastewater sludge, which is a special waste. Solid waste is waste that is non-hazardous, comes from industrial or commercial operations or households, and is not exempted or considered special waste. Solid waste is the default category, and if there is nothing that specifically says something is not solid waste, then it is. Generally, solid waste can be handled by simply throwing it out. However, there are some exceptions, including pharmaceutical, medical, infectious and radioactive wastes, as well as controlled substances. These wastes may need treatment or neutralization before being considered solid waste. The contained landfill is the most familiar type of landfill, and it accepts household, commercial, and industrial wastes. While most waste disposed of in a contained landfill is non-hazardous, they will accept household hazardous waste in limited situations. As you can see from the slide, contained landfills are made up of layers of protection that include a clay barrier, plastic liner, leachate collection system, refuse cell, and a daily cover. No landfill refuse is left exposed overnight. If you contact your local contained landfill and they will not accept your waste, you may have to look for a residual landfill which are designed to dispose of a limited number of industrial wastes. Residual landfills do not have a general list of acceptable waste. Instead, acceptable wastes are defined in specific permits, with each waste stream being analyzed before being disposed of. You cannot dispose of municipal solid waste at a residual landfill. Construction and demolition debris are non-hazardous waste material resulting from construction, repair, remodeling, demolition, or road construction. In addition to what you would normally think of as construction and demolition debris, uncontaminated vegetation cleared up for construction or after a storm is also included in this category. 
You cannot just leave it piled up unless you are the property owner. Otherwise, it must be properly disposed of at a construction and demolition debris landfill. The simplest way to handle construction and demolition debris is to take it to a licensed construction and demolition debris landfill. However, a one-time disposal of construction or demolition debris by beneficially reusing the debris as structural fill is permitted without requiring any written permit as long as it meets the following requirements. Disposal occurs at the point of generation. Disposal occurs only during the period of construction. The wastes do not include any materials that contain leachable hazardous constituents or asbestos. And the waste does not include packaging or putrescible wastes. There are two categories for construction and demolition debris landfills, which are based on size. A construction and demolition debris landfill that is one acre or less must register with the Division of Waste Management under a permit by rule, while one that is greater than one acre in size must be permitted. This matters because if you have a large scale development project, it may make more sense to register as a small construction and demolition debris landfill and dispose of things on your own. Special wastes are high volume and low hazard and include waste generated from mining, utilities, and coal gasification facilities. Special waste is a distinct category from solid and hazardous waste. All generators of special waste must be registered. Special waste must go to a permitted special waste landfill, which has specifically been designed for special waste. In general, the following waste streams are not acceptable at special waste landfills. Hazardous waste, municipal solid waste, small quantity or limited quantity hazardous waste, and industrial solid waste. As we mentioned earlier, special waste landfills are designed for a specific or limited number of special waste. These include mining, coal gasification, or other utility wastes, along with wastewater treatment sludge and cement kiln dust. If you have a waste from a utility facility, chances are you will need to find a special waste landfill to get rid of it. Now we are going to cover permits related to solid waste that a general facility might need to be concerned about. Generating solid waste doesn't require a permit. Permits are involved on the landfill's end and they will vary depending on the types of waste a landfill accepts. Remember, do not open dump. Disposal of waste at any place other than a permitted site or facility is illegal. Certain solid waste facilities are required to register under a permit by rule, which is not the same as a traditional permit. Permit by rules are written for a specific industry or operation type with facilities registering for coverage under that category. Here we see some of the categories which a registered permit by rule is currently available for. These include transfer stations, recycling centers, composting facilities, land farms, construction and demolition debris landfills less than one acre in size, and solid waste incinerators. There are also common activities that are considered to be under a permit by rule, but do not require a registration. Burying construction and demolition debris on site is one example if all requirements are met. One last topic I want to touch on before moving on to the last section is waste tires. You must register with the Division of Waste Management if you accumulate over 25 tires for processing transport more than 50 tires at one time, or accumulate more than 100 tires. We are going to shift gears a little bit for these last few minutes. So far, we have discussed waste management and the types of waste. We are going to wrap up by talking about waste reduction. Not only is it good for the environment, but it can save you money on waste hauling costs. Facilities can reduce solid waste through source reduction by finding preemptive ways to decrease waste before it is generated, or reducing the amount and toxicity of waste created. Remember, if a material still has use or is recycled, 
it is not considered solid waste. This slide shows us a basic diagram indicating the most preferred methods for accomplishing waste reduction. As you can see, source reduction and reuse is at the top as the most preferred method, with recycling and composting second, and energy recovery third. Treatment and then disposal are the least preferred methods. As long as a potential solid waste can be used for something, it is not considered waste and can be reused without obtaining a written permit. Beneficial reuse can cover things such as recycling, soil amendments, wood waste to mulch, making use of byproduct in process, distiller's grains, and using demolition materials as structural fill. However, there are caveats to this. There must be a legitimate use for the potential wastes. For example, if you use demolition materials as fill material, you must be planning to construct on the area where the material is buried. You cannot just bury it and move on. While an approval may not be required, the Division of Waste Management will provide a written approval if requested with a DEP 7098 form. Beneficial reuse of special waste does not usually require a permit. However, there is an exception for coal combustion residuals. Recycling consists of collecting waste to reuse or remanufacture into usable products or materials. These days, a lot of municipal solid waste can be recycled, and many local municipalities and waste hauling companies have recycling capabilities. In addition, there are marketplaces developing for sale and transfer of recycled materials. Both Ohio and Tennessee have pages on materials-market-place.org. Composting involves allowing decomposition in controlled aerobic conditions. Roughly 70% of waste produced in the United States is compostable, with some examples being paper, food, wood waste, and yard waste. Composted material is commonly used to make mulch and soil amendments. Composting facilities must have a certified operator. If your facility is planning to do any composting, it may be easier to see if a composting facility or hauling company will accept your compostable waste. Here we see a list of useful resources. This concludes today's module. The Environmental Compliance Assistance Program hopes you have enjoyed this presentation and we encourage you to reach out to us if any further assistance is needed, not only for your waste-related questions, but for any other environmental issues you may need assistance with. Thank you, have a great day.